anything? Asia. So, without further ado, we'd like to introduce our guest, who is, of course, the creator of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge series. Have you guys heard of that? <laughs> and he's also referred to here as the godfather of the abridged age. <laughs> he has thus far produced no less than 52 episodes, a spin-off, a prequel, a Christmas special, and two movies. He created a cultural phenomenon in the anime world. In addition to playing nearly every character in his own series, whoops, he has made cameos in the Death Note, Naruto, Sonic X, Trinity, Blood, Pokemon, Full Metal Alchemist, and Sailor Moon Abridged series. So, he's on a mission. Okay. <laughs> he's on a mission today. He wants to revitalize interest in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise and make it more accessible to Joe Public. Little Karibo will continue the original Abridged series, providing us with priceless entertainment for many years to come. Yay! <laughs> He's an all-around nice guy, as you can see, and a community fan favorite. He's also associated with Team Four Star, the group behind Dragon Ball Z Abridged, who also supplies voices and has made guest appearances on comic book video review series Atop the Fourth Wall. Ready? So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Little Karibo! I'd be clapping if I wasn't holding a camera on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very good. How's everybody good? Wow. Wow. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Will everybody hate me if I say I've never seen a single Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> what? Outrage! <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged is basically, I took the original show Yu-Gi-Oh! and I took the card games out of it and I, <laughs> I was left with about two minutes worth of footage. <laughs> so I, it really wasn't that much hard work, so, but I, I ended up making it uh, slightly funny, some people might say, and uh, I did all the voices myself because I, I kind of figured that I could do I could do that because I've been watching the show and I, I watched an episode where Tristan at the end says, I knew it wasn't the real part of the whole time! <laughs> So pretty much Tristan was the, the progenitor for the whole thing, so we can, we can owe everything to Tristan Taylor. <laughs> Where did you get the idea? Tristan, Tristan Taylor, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I was very bored one day and I decided I wanted to be involved in the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom and uh, I, I, I thought originally that I was going to do it by writing fan fiction. <laughs> Maybe a, maybe a fandom of some sort, and so I, I, I had the Yu-Gi-Oh! DVDs lying around, and I, I sliced together a bunch of footage, and uh, at the end of the day, I, I decided, wait, wait, I could do something completely, completely original, and uh, <laughs> dub it over and make it funny, and while, to be honest, you, you could say that that's not something that nobody's done before, because a lot of people have done, like, uh, anime spoofs and uh, things, things like that, uh, but I gave it a title and uh, kind of gave it a theme, and I made it an episodic series, so at the end of the day, I, I, I turned it into something that people were interested in actually seeing more of, rather than just seeing it as a one-time thing. And uh, it, it just, it, it got, kind of got a lot of its own because of the fandom. I, I owe everything to you guys, honestly. It was, when was it that you first started watching Yu-Gi-Oh? I first started watching Yu-Gi-Oh pretty much around the time that the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge came out, uh, because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, which is strange because uh, the first episode came out when like pretty much the last episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! had aired. So I kind of got into the show, as I do with a lot of shows, when it got cancelled. So I kind of feel like I'm the reason that a lot of shows die. <laughs> I got into Mystery Science Theater 2000 during the final season. I got into Xena Warrior Princess after that got cancelled. <laughs> and, and so I kind of feel like I kind of, I'm the thing that sort of vacuums up after everybody's done. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm the janitor of different fandoms, I guess. Shall I sit down? Oh, sure, sorry. You sort of got caught up. So you will get your time to ask him questions later. What is this all about? This is, this is uh, made by a good friend of mine. This is the Millennium Championship. Which, uh, uh, you guys have seen Dragon Ball Z Abridged? Yeah. Do you guys know Nappa? Yeah. <laughs> the guy who did the voice of Nappa made that belt for me. That guy one on one. He's made, uh, he's made a, a bunch of wrestling style belts for a, a bunch of different abridges. He made the uh, he made the Patty Cake Championship for himself, and he made the uh, the International Awesome Championship for the guy who directs Dragon Ball Z Abridged, Kaiser Echo. And uh, he made this one for me as kind of a, a thank you for all the all the work I put into Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, and for, get, for just as a symbol of friendship. Friendship! <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a really sweet gift. So, it says here that we're supposed to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series. We don't have to. <laughs> Yeah, we can do that, yeah, sure. Yeah, is that something you guys want to do? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about Thorotol Bridge! <laughs> <laughs> and there's also something very exciting. We're going to be seeing a new episode. We are going to be seeing it. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! Do you all no longer have an excuse to say that you've never seen an episode? <laughs> I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. I was just trying to do a kind of reaction they'd have. If they'd stow me, throw tomatoes. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't. Yeah. Pretty nice. Very, yeah. I was going to say, how do you follow Navishin? And then, unfortunately, you guys seem to be okay with having me on stage. I was quite tempted to come out and sing the Nerima Nir- Nir- Daikon for this thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah? Gonna live a hell of a dream today. When you turn it all the hell. I dream not of money, but music that we sing in the show. Oh, that a sweet young thing like me. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. Just a reason I wanted to talk about you. How do you be you? How do I be me? Yeah. Uh, lots of oxygen. <laughs> Expensive oxygen. Have you been to an oxygen bar? It is pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah, so how does one become little Kariba? Be at the right place at the right time, honestly. I honestly feel like uh, a lot of uh, the, the, the fame that has been attributed to me is, is more uh, due to, honestly, you guys, the family, because uh, it's, it's literally like, I never went out of my way to promote myself on my show. I literally just made it and kind of let it settle, and then everybody else sort of gathered around and was like, oh wow, this is great, we should, we should talk about this on websites and on forums and stuff. And I, I kind of like looked away and then looked back and there was like a, a million people surrounding this thing that I've done. And it, I don't know where they all came from, but they, they were there. And, but, uh, I honestly, I feel like, uh, I, I owe everything to you guys, I really do. <laughs> Who's my favorite character in Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged? Character in Maddox. Uh, he's based, Marek is basically me when I was 15 years old. <laughs> Not so much the way he dresses, but uh, the, the way he behaves, his, his, his attitude towards life, and being very loud, and being an idiot. <laughs> and uh, just, just generally being in denial about a lot of his stupid ideas, being stupid ideas. I, I was always the guy who sort of sat in the corner and, and yelled quotes from things. <laughs> I, was, I was once one of those people. Now I make the quotes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Marek is my, probably my favorite. Uh, outside of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, it's totally Naruto from my Naruto spook. <laughs> but uh, Marek, Marek in general, he's awesome. And the reason he's awesome is because you can kind of say anything as Marek and it, it sounds really funny, so my job's already done. <laughs> and I can't shake. Who's <laughs> your least favorite? Any, well, I, I mean, it, I sound kind of sexist when I say this, but any of the female characters, if only because, if only because I don't think I can do a very good job with the voice. I mean, uh, you, <laughs> my Valentine, for example, is it, very, very awkward because it's not, it doesn't sound remotely feminine. It's just, it sounds like, yes, hey, we're going to get that out of here, yes, hey. It sounds like a 50 gangster or something like that. With, with awesome breasts. <laughs> Alright, we've got more questions coming from the audience later on, but first, the new episode! Woo! Woo! Captain, you've got to use this one. Yes, please! Do it! 
Uh, so glad you haven't seen the more recent episodes. Uh, this episode takes place right after Kaiba defeats Lecter in a duel and uh, Mokuba has been kidnapped by evil Tristan. Uh, he's now in the possession of Noah Kaiba, who's going to give donuts. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, it starts off pretty much right where that left off, so if we want to just go ahead and play that. And we'll see if it's... <laughs> if you like it, then I'll be online in a couple of weeks. I just realized what the S stands for in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zeal. Don't make it. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm going to think of that! Because I can't deny it! Hey, are you feeling okay? You've been acting way more horny than usual. And that's saying something. <laughs> yeah, I am horny, Yu-Gi! Oh, for the love of Frank, will you quit it already? Wait! Who said that? It's me, Madagascar. <laughs> and for the record, I was possessing this girl way before it was cool. <laughs>
If you come to the, the panel at 2 o'clock, I actually have another very special video to show. Uh, if you check your program guide, it's well worth coming to see, believe me. It's, it's very, very special. Something that you guys might have been waiting for for a while now that I promise that it's coming out. It's very, very cool. That's okay. All right. So, anything else would you like to comment on this? Uh, Kay's voice is really difficult now. <laughs> I, I, my voice is a lot scratchier than it used to be. I don't know about from doing that at all or not, but uh, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's really, it, I find it really difficult to do Kay's voice, uh, and it's weird because I haven't done her voice in a while because uh, Taka Hara 101, who plays uh, Crump in uh, uh, Yu Gi Oh Bridge, actually took over for a while. And uh, I, I kind of stopped doing Kay's voice for a while, so uh, taking over again is. It's, very, it's, it's a strange feeling to, 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 to suddenly have to do that again. But uh, yeah, I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's out of the way. And uh, the next episode should be exciting because uh, it's going to be the Yami and Joey versus the entire, uh, the entire Big Five who are all played by Team Four Star. So if you think about it, if you think about it, it's basically Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge versus Team Four Star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to see that. Thanks for that. That's cool. Who had a question? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's all quiet suddenly. Proper. All right. Well... You can ask the question. <laughs> Have you seen the Millennium Rock? <laughs> oh, right there. About that big. <laughs> so you have to form a cube? You can ask characters questions as well if you want. I will do my best to answer in character. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got the microphone over here, and we've got another microphone over there. You have to line up to get access. First come, first serve. Jaden, you too. Oh my god. There's a million people lining up to all the questions. Where's the number one? Look at that line. Look at it. It's still going back. Epic. I so want to parody what they're saying right now. I'm red as a But uh, most of, mostly they involve dragons. I'm looking right really at you. Really big dragons, really slow dragons flying towards me. Then he's, he's a giant, he's standing over me, and he, and he calls me a dog, and then I had a dog suit on, and then it gets weird. <laughs> what? As if that wasn't weird enough. Okay, thanks. That's cool. Okay. Craving? <laughs> I, 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 I have cravings for cream puffs. 
Um, so, so it gives kind of a running joke. I have every talk, and if I meet that person, I will, I will, I will mention the fact that I made marriage sex noises that one. <laughs> and uh, they weren't very rousing. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yes. Marriage, marriage kissing, marriage kissing noises are very funny as well. Laugh. <laughs> He's a very loud kisser. I don't think the caller would appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, we know what your favorite character is, but um, what character did you have the most fun time parodying when you started Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, the appreciation? Which character did I have the most fun parodying when I first started? Uh, Tristan was everybody's favorite, and it's very hard to say that he wasn't my favorite, because uh, it's very easy to write for that guy, because you could basically just say anything that an idiot would say, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it would sound right coming out of Tristan's voice, uh, mouth. Uh, I mean, also, uh, the hair guy. The guy, because back in the day... <laughs> I told you, do it! <laughs> it was really, it was the weirdest thing. That was the first time that I ever did something that I wasn't sure people would like, but I wanted to bring him back over and over again, saying the same thing, <laughs> saying attention to it. The first time I recorded that line, I was like, every time he shows up, he has to say, attention to it! Uh, and I didn't know if it would go over well, or people would be like, why does he keep saying that? But people thought that was hilarious, and it was kind of the first real, I guess the first real catchphrase from the series, I don't know, because everything else was something that was, was like a one-time thing, like, screw the rules I have money, I guess was the first real, like, yeah, that was the first thing people picked up on, but uh, Attention to us was the first conscious effort I made to have like a running joke uh, catchphrase throughout the whole thing. Uh, he was a lot of fun to write for. Found a key, uh, obviously. <laughs> In Australia. Your voice gives you super strength. Wait, wait, gives you super strength. Wait, wait, strength. <laughs> I was very proud. I actually got the English dub voice actor of Tristan to say that at, at uh, Comic Con 2008. Much to the chagrin of the Japanese uh, 5D production team who were there. If you want. Uh, yeah. the, the guy who made, uh, well, the guy who produced 5D was actually signing autographs and I was talking to Greg Abbey after the panel. And apparently uh, the whole time he was glaring at me from the corner of my vision. Uh, I wasn't aware of well, it. Well, if this is the guy I'm seeing here. Oh, wow. Look at that cute. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Hello. 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 The actual Spongebob theme song? Yes! Yes! The actual I don't know it that well off my heart, I'll try. <laughs> Are you ready, kids? <laughs> I can't hear you. Alright, Captain. Ooh, lifting a pineapple under the sea. <laughs> I don't know the rest of the lyrics. <laughs> I'll send Spongebob to the Shadow Realm. Good job. <laughs> First of all, you, sir, are a god. Why don't you? Second of all, oh my god, what do you really find attractive about Sakura? Are you asking me or Martin Villani Little Karibo? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> I like your voice. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> Uh, what do I find attractive about the Flora? Uh, I like, uh, he, he has a British accent, and everybody knows British accents are the sexiest accents. <laughs> he's not British, he's just gay. <laughs> I like his gay accent. Okay, everyone knows the gay accent is the sexiest accent. I go back and forth on accents all the time. He has a nice shirt as well. <laughs> Blue, blue and white shirt is very nice. <laughs> yes, you have a tiny data. <laughs> is that the link thing? Pointing at point next up. Ah, it's lying to you. <laughs> it's never nice. <nine. laughs> <laughs> I don't like you anymore. <laughs> Are we over here now? <laughs> um, before I ask my question, I just want to say, on behalf of all of us, thank you for coming to Australia. This is a great <laughs> uh, My question is, 
out of all the adjectives, out of all the dual monsters, how, how did you come up with the name Little Karibo? Oh, that's a good question, because even I don't really know the answer. But uh, originally, I was gonna, when I was trying to get into the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom, I was going to do fan fiction, and I was, this is really a, a stupid thing uh, that I thought of, but I was going to call myself, you know the Yu-Gi-Oh! card Curse of Dragon? Yeah. I was going to call myself Cursive Dragon, like Cursive, like, like uh, <laughs> Yeah! It's a pun! And for all the jip I give for kids, that's a pretty bad pun, right? <laughs> but uh, Cursive Dragon was the original thing, and then I just, I think I forgot about that, and I just wrote, okay, Little Karibo, because Karibo is kind of the mascot of Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess, and uh, I don't know why Little Karibo, because I don't know. It, it's a, huh? So I can be LK, I guess, so, <laughs> I don't know. Also, um, would you know to a spook theory? Yes! You've got some pretty good voices for the characters, um, Sasuke is awesome, Naruto. Why, well, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Um, who's the next saga? Have you got any idea for the voice of the characters like, um, Gara or Jiraiya? You know what, it's interesting you should ask that because I'm actually trying to work out what to do with Gara. Uh, because I want to do the second Naruto movie, and Gara appears in that movie. Uh, and, uh, Kaiser, the guy who did the directing of Dragon Ball Z, I, I don't know if I'm even going to go with this. And <laughs> you guys are probably not going to like it. But he suggested he be basically be the, the very uh, intimidating, very, like, Gara, but have a very calm accent. <laughs> no? <laughs> yes! But, uh, what was it with Jiraiya? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't seen that much Naruto. I think Jiraiya is the other sensei who... Yeah, the, the, the really, really pervy guy. The pervy guy, yeah. yeah. The, uh, Master Roshi of Naruto. I was, I was considering, uh, I don't know who to make this character, but I mean, for a while I was considering Jiraiya because uh, I want to do something that sounds like Hank Hell from King of the Hill. <laughs> that boy ain't right. Bobby? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think I'm going to work with Jiraiya. And finally, um, in your recent video you've done a, what you believe to be an Australian accent. We got it! <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me some, some Australian phrases that would sound good with that voice. Oh. Yes, you know my baby. A day guy, my baby, you <laughs> Thank you very much and thank you for coming to Australia. Thank you for having me. A little more percentages and he would have nailed it. Yeah, hi. Uh, is, my first question is, uh, is Melvin going to be stuck where he is for the rest of the virtual world arc? Has he met his match in that mechanical world? <laughs> uh, he, he may have met his match in the door, but he actually uh, comes across an old new threat. Have you, have you seen the original uh, the saga? The, the, yeah, yeah. He comes across some robots that try to uh, attack him. and. Uh, I don't know what I'll do with those, but uh, I know that he will walk into a room, see a screen, uh, and uh, laugh at it. Uh, <laughs> that's something that uh, he does in the actual show. And I'm trying to think of what to put on that screen that would make him laugh. Uh, but originally I did like a stinger for one of the episodes, like he saw the Charlie bit my finger thing and he laughed at that. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm tempted to have something involving crows. I don't know if you guys know crows, but he's uh, just, just something random. Also, I, I imagine he'll probably replace it with the Kill Your Family show. <laughs> Excellent. No problem. It is my show. And, um, just a quick shout-out for the Not Herbert series. Yeah! Um, shout-out to my special date. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> my favorite, by the way. Um, when can we expect some new episodes? Oh, the Naruto Boom? Yeah. Uh, as soon as I get them done, I really want to get another one done really soon, but, uh, the movie is the, the priority right now. The sequel to the, the, the first movie. Really looking forward to it. Awesome! I actually have some really good ideas for that movie, because I don't know if you've seen the, the second Naruto movie, but uh, the, the protagonist the, the protagonist that isn't Naruto is this, this kid with long blonde hair and a sword. Temujin. Huh? Temujin. Is that his name? Yeah. 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 And his dad is like, he's got like uh, dark like brown hair, and he's always going on about, uh, not his dad, but his, 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 the guy who's like his, his, his master. Uh, wow. Yeah, he, he's going about peace and stuff like that, and I kind of want to have them be the uh, Link and uh, King Harkinian from the Zelda CDI game. <laughs> That's kind of my idea right now. Oh, you, sir, are a genius, and we love all your future work. Cheers, dude. Big oh. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Hi. I just want to know, one second, how does it feel to have more fangirls than me? 
Sake, Sake, brother. Sake! I knew that was you! Uh, how'd the girl have more fans than you? Uh, wait, how do you know that? Who, how many people in here like Sake? I think you have plenty of fans, sir. And I'm one of them. Not enough. Uh, uh, it, it feels, it, I try not to think too much about how many fans I have. Honestly, I, I try just to... I, I mean, I'm a fan myself. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of people, I'm a fan in general. And I, I honestly, the whole fandom thing is, is awesome in my opinion. So, uh, I, don't, I, I don't think of uh, having fans, I think of myself as being a fan. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you guys, I, I belong down there and you guys belong up here just as much as, you know, I, I don't want to do. Any weird stories of fans trying to get to you? Fans trying to get to me? Like stalkers? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> can you tell us one? I can tell you, uh... There was one really strange, and I probably shouldn't tell these stories because uh, they, they will probably want a video footage of this, and yeah, I can see you guys are filming. But, <laughs> but uh, there, was this, there was this one fan who I've encountered several times, and I only highlight the one incident because it was uh, the strangest one. It wasn't strange, it was the scariest one. But uh, uh, I, I met this person several times, and I went to see the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, 10th anniversary movie, the 3D movie in New York. And uh, this person uh, that was there, and I didn't realize it was them at first, uh, and they, they said, uh, did you want to come and, and, and sit next to me and watch the movie? And I'm like, that's not the scary part, but they said, they offered to make sit, to sit next to me during the movie, and I was like, I'm, I'm with some friends, I'll probably go hang out with them, and uh, then they said, okay, but I'll call you, and I'm like, well, <laughs> you'll, you'll call me? And they were like, yeah, I found your phone number. <laughs> How did you get my phone number? And I'm trying to downplay the fact that I'm, I'm packing okay. myself. But, uh, basically, apparently, at a, a, a previous convention, Crow, my, my friend Crow, <laughs> had uh, wanted to call me. And uh, in order, he, he keeps losing his cell phone. And in order to call me, he, he, he took somebody else's his phone, and it just happened to be this person. <laughs> and he, he called my number, and they saved it. <laughs> So they, they got one of my phone numbers. Fortunately, I don't use that phone very much. But uh, it was kind of scary for a minute. But the, I'm not saying it's girl or a boy. But the, I, I, if this person has remembered this incident, then, then hopefully they don't know who I'm talking about. There's been a bunch of people trying to get to me, though. There's been a lot of stuff. Because people, people, come, people came up to me at work and were like, when's the new episode? <laughs> and I'm like, that would be 599. <laughs> anyway. I was just wondering, why does Murray call everyone Steve? You know, I keep remembering differently, but uh, I think that originally the Steve thing came from uh, an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, because there's, there's an episode called Night of the Blood Beast in season 7, where every character seems to be called Steve. And I just thought, what if I just... I, I wrote the script, and uh, I, without thinking about that, I called one of the rare hunters Steve, because he doesn't have a name. He just called, he just called Rare Hunter, and I just thought, yeah, he's not the friend that's called Steve. <laughs> they have to have names, <laughs> and I just called them all Steve in the script. And I thought, what if there was a reason for that? And what if the Millennium Rod only works on people called Steve? <laughs> and I thought, nobody's going to think that's funny. And, and now everybody, everybody thinks that's one, think that's one of the funniest running jokes in, in the uh, season two, which I, I, I was very proud of. Uh, it's very rare that I write something self-indulgent like that that people actually latch onto and enjoy, so I, I was pretty proud of it. And, um, can you also do the, um, the la la voice that Karibo does? Do the la 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 I'd like to talk to Martin now. Hi. So, wait. Okay. Lagora and Mary are two of your best characters, so what are you going to do with them when they don't appear in the Doma arc? Good point. Yeah. I'll probably cry a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still doing the Evil Council videos. Actually, I've written the new Evil Council video and I'm planning to edit it as soon as possible. But basically, to give you guys a hint of what to, to expect from that, uh, I don't know if this is a really question, but I'll, I'll try my best to do that. But uh, in the next Evil Council video, Bakora sees Marek's Because he's fed up with Marek and uh, he goes to join the after Evil Council. <laughs> It's, a, it's going to be a two-part of them, so Marek will try and get the Cora to join back. But the whole thing is going to be treated like they're going through a divorce. 
but uh, I think he's Noma. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, Doc, uh, played by Takano Wano, he's a very funny guy, so I'm hoping yep. that people won't know because he's so funny. But uh, that's going to be difficult. A lot of old characters come back there, like Rex and Weevil are like main characters in that. And obviously you have the whole scene with Yami on the train, dueling Weevil, and the whole, oh god thing. With the, that's a pretty popular scene. But, uh, but there's, there's a lot going on in that series, so hopefully I'll be able to distract myself from the fact that two of my favorite characters aren't there. It'll be difficult, but I will admit. Also, have you given any thoughts to, to doing the Bonsi on, to abridging the Bonsi on Time movie with really Absolutely, that? absolutely. I'm totally down for that. I'm probably going to have that done by the end of the year. With that, that's Uh, they will be involved, yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Absolutely. This question is asked in front of a live studio audience. It is! <laughs> um, how long does it take you to make an episode? Like, can you plan the whole season, or do you just kind of make them? Oh, uh... Uh, Team Four start to do the whole planning thing. Uh, I'm very much seated in my pants, you know, have no idea what I'm doing uh, uh, stuff. Uh, but um, uh, for, as for how long it takes to make an episode, it varies, really. Uh, I was able to make an episode once a week for a short period of time, but I kind of couldn't get anything done in, in, like, in like my spare time. I kind of didn't have a life at that point. But uh, if, if I'm really, if I'm really like, deprive myself of any fun or, or social interaction, I could do one once a week, but uh, I'd say on average I could probably do one once a month uh, if I try to do it like uh, w w without, you know, depriving myself a lot. Stuff. But uh, it's difficult, it's very hard to, to maintain something like this where, I mean, I've made, honestly, I've made uh, 53, uh, 53 episodes, yeah, and uh, you get to a point where it's like, what more do you say about these characters? I mean, honestly, you, you, you could honestly say that with the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, I said pretty much everything I needed to say. Uh, so it's hard to kind of like say that, that there's more stuff to make fun of in the show. I mean, it literally is just, I mean, I don't say that this is all Yu-Gi-Oh! is, it's, but it's a card game in every episode. And there's, there's little beats of character interaction around that, but it's very hard to have to, to look at a scene where a character is standing over here and a character is standing over here and there's a bunch of cards in between them and think of something different with that. You know, I mean, with Dragon Ball Z, uh, it, it, it's kind of the same thing because they're fighting, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it's very difficult to, 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 get my, to, get, to get to the point where it's like, uh, think of something truly original with, with something like that. Do you ever laugh at the stuff you come up with? Do I ever laugh? Uh, with Naruto Scoop, I do all the time. Uh, with Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge is something I write to make other people laugh. <laughs> Naruto Scoop is something I write to make myself laugh. And fortunately, other people laugh as well sometimes. <laughs> okay, thank you. No problem. Last question. Uh, Thursday on the panel at 2 o'clock if you guys want to come to it. Sorry, Lion. We got it too. Hello? Hey. Um, um, besides Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge and, and Naruto and Team Ball stuff, stuff um, you do a whole ton of cameos and just random bits from your characters from other shows, how does that work? Do they, do like the directors say, oh, do you mind if you want to do this, or do you just audition like everyone else? Uh, sometimes, it, it, it varies, it really does, but sometimes, usually if somebody asks me just a cameo for the sake of a cameo, like, uh, for example, if somebody says, I used to get all the time with people making a Yu-Gi-Oh! GX abridged, and Yami's in the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX abridged, so I got a lot of people saying, would you play Yami in my Yu-Gi-Oh! GX abridged, because, you are the voice of uh, Yami and Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. And I honestly feel like that shouldn't be the reason that I, I do a cameo. I shouldn't do a cameo just because, you know, I'm, I'm the guy. And I, I always feel like, uh, I, I feel like if, if I'm doing a cameo just because I'm a little Karibo, that, that I feel like I'm not really doing anything. That, that, first of all, it, it distracts from what they, they're doing. And it, and it also feels like I'm just sort of, I, I'm not really doing anything uh, myself. I, I mean. With Frieza, for example, I feel like I'm actually giving an, an acting performance. I feel like I'm I'm uh, I'm doing something because I never I, I I'll admit something right now. I've never seen any, anything with Dragon Ball Z. I had I had no idea who Frieza was when they said, do you, "Would you mind being Frieza?" And I was like, "Oh, okay." And I looked at him and I, I thought about what, what what he was as a character. And I thought he's a tiny he's a tiny little guy. He's an alien. He's the emperor of the universe. He's kind of like Space Napoleon <laughs> <laughs> with, with laser fingers. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, that's basically how I tried to tackle him, was to start with a, a huge ego, but very, very small, very diminutive, a very dickish for some reason. <laughs> People say he's like, they smoke about the before I had a baby. <laughs> But uh, with other people, I, I tend to try and prefer, uh, if I'm doing a cameo, it's either, it's either a one-line thing, 
uh, a, a, or it's something where they give me a, a character to play rather than just playing some, just, just do it being me. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like when I do my show, I'm doing funny voices. I'm not acting. But when I when I do things for other people, I prefer to feel like I'm acting. You know, I, I don't know. But as for getting in touch with me, usually it's just skyping me or something like that. Which is um, speaking of Frieza, um, in the actual series, the prop series, Frieza transforms is in like what two times? Two more? Four times? Thank two you. Times, yeah. Four times, yeah. Um, are you going to still do the Frieza voice then, or is someone going to take over after after that? I have asked for this, and as far as I know, I'm still going to be doing the voice for Frieza for all the different transformations. I think they're just going to change the way I play him a little bit. And I think for like the final form Frieza, he's just going to be serious business Frieza. He's not going to be like, oh, it's like fun. It's going to be <laughs> no jokes. No jokes in the rat. Okay. Yep, thanks. No problem. I guess that's it. And we'll see you at 2 o'clock. Yes, yeah, you will want to come to the 2 o'clock one because I'm showing a very awesome video. I, I'm very proud of you. Thanks everyone. Little Karibo! Woo! 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 Woo!